afternoon the sun is out the rain is gone the clouds are gone and we're ready for a great soccer game here between uccs and westminster round two after a fantastic women's game this morning men's team here today uccs a little bit thin in some areas but uccs and westminster both looking to start their conference season off strong i'm jared verner joined here by jake ross jake what are your thoughts coming to this game as both teams get ready to get it this game underway well the big thing with both of these teams is just kind of a mixed bag for both of them so far starting four two and one for the mountain lions three and five for the griffins not a great start for either of them kind of a mixed bag all around both of them are gonna first game of armac play clean slate for everybody everybody wants to be back on to a clean start so kind of a new beginning before the rest of the season gets underway you want to have your best players out there get a good start for the conference play big uh they look more towards conference for playoff hopes and stuff so this is where it gets more important for both of these teams you want to start off strong no definitely and both these teams as you said want to get the conference season start off on the same foot both these teams did get some conference opponents in last week they weren't official conference games but they did get to see at least, at least some of the armat competition as we get things underway here at mount lion stadium westminster controlling things off right off the bat and all of a sudden now uccs will throw an opportunity in the far side and as you said, thin in some areas for the Mountain Lions. Uh, regular starters, Aiden Schwenke, not in this game, dealing with uh, serving a red card suspension, I should say, as well as Nick Grotley is also one of those players that is in there usually, but is not in there dealing with a red card suspension. But a big name back in the lineup, number nine, Alex Anderson for the Mountain Lions, one of their big impact players. Uh, was injured last year, missed the first part of the season. Um, although he came back in against Adam State last week, it was his first shift back and almost immediately scored a goal. That's the kind of player he is for this team, and it is a big impact for him back in the lineup. Now you mentioned Nick Rotley being out, one of the top offensive threats for UCCS, but still on there a name that how much pressure that put on Colby Ranieri for the Mount Lions, that other top kind of go that go to on offense. Yeah, Ranieri, he's leading the team with three goals, two assists, eight points on the year. Uh, kind of one of those midfield guys. You'll see him jump up into the play. Not one of the biggest, like, do-it-by-himself guys, but he is the beneficiary of a lot of setup plays, but it's important to have that last finisher guy in your player, 
in those plays to be able to finish those games or those plays off, get into the middle, get a strong kickoff, and that is that guy for the Mountain Lions. As we get things underway here, just over a minute in Westminster, so far controlling the pace for at least this first opening, 75 to looks like now 120 seconds as things get ready underneath here. As we mentioned, both teams coming in a conference opener, both teams playing conference opponents last week. Westminster, an 0-2 loss at Mesa and a 2-1 win at Fort Lewis last weekend for UCCS, won 2 to nothing at Adams and then lost 1-2 to two at Colorado Christian. Looking at the offense for the men Griffins out there, they have seven single goal scorers, but nobody yet to score multiple goals. So there's lots of guys that can get pushed into that play. Um, so I'm sure that one of them will get involved, but none of them repeat offenders yet. But I'm sure they are all looking to break the ice today. Oh, definitely. And like you said, a lot of people, a very balanced Westminster team, uh, looking to get things off here in the conference opener. As Griffins in their purple uniforms with white trim, UCCS with their white uniforms, black trim, getting things started here. Mount Lions at home for the second straight weekend after that two to nothing win against Adams State. After, after that, it was wins against Newman. So right now, West, UCCS coming in unbeaten at home, 2 0 and 1 after a season opening win against Newman and a tie against Montana State Billings. So Mount Lions hoping that home magic continues as Westminster trying to threaten here, but looks like an offsides call against the Griffins. Yeah, that's a big thing for the Mountain Lions to lean on. They've been uh, almost unbeatable at home and the one tie was uh, no score through all of that time. So um, you can kind of throw that one out. Not a whole lot to take from that, um, but you want you want to keep your momentum moving at home when you have a strong point like that especially when you're starting off armac competition like this you want to lean on that and carry that success into the rest of the season kukowska sends the ball down deep for the mount lines headed up by westminster and controlled ultimately by uccs on that far sideline if you were here for the women's game that's why we are a little bit late getting this game underway a great women's game between these two teams ended up in ucs's favor three to two mount Lion men hoping they can continue that same pattern here in game number two ahead of sunday's game uh for uccs against mesa for westminster down in pueblo if this game is even half as good as the game before it is, we're still in for a good one. Exactly. That was, if you missed it, watch it on the man. It's a fantastic game. As Westminster trying to move it down the field, they are definitely controlling it. I, I wouldn't say it to the same level as the women did, but definitely West, it is Westminster's game so far in this first five minutes. Kind of the the look that they're having here is they're, they've held possession for most of the time, but they're just kind of trying to set up uh, plays, pick their opportunities. And an opportunity there, but tapped away by Armin Haznovic. But that was a great opportunity to try to set that up, but I agree. Yeah, just kind of trying to see what they can put together here as UCCS moving it down the field quickly. That's Ranieri, as we mentioned earlier. Almost had a really nice cutback there for Ranieri. Tried to tap it and go back on the other side, showing off his speed there for a moment, but the Mountain Lions will get a throw in here. The Mountain Lions play with a lot more emotion on the men's side of things than the women's. Uh, the women's kind of sit back and let their play do the talking, and the men's are not afraid to, to start trash talking and get into the game. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, some kind of mind games being played on the field as well. And we'll do our best. I'm just noticing Westminster doesn't have uniforms on the front of their jersey, which will make it interesting for, for, for us two who are not following Westminster every single weekend. So we'll do our best. The nice thing is they got great big numbers on the back of the jersey. So at least they made up for, for that. As we get the kickoff there from Zach Moss, he's going to send it deep downfield but out of bounds. Throw in for the Mount Lions. Yeah, Adam Baldwin took the throw in over for the Mountain Lions. He's one of those everyday starters for them. One of the a senior this year, a guy that they could really count on. Uh, had to spend a, a one game suspension earlier in the year because he blocked a shot in the box with his hands, which is an automatic red card. But if you're going to take a suspension, that's an awfully good one to take. He did save a goal for his team. So I'm sure if you ask him about it, he'd do the same thing again in that situation. But uh, a guy that you can lean on, a big 
powerhouse guy offensively and one that will probably be saying his name a lot during this game. No, and I remember that goal. That was that Newman game, and it, old Mount Lions ultimately got, up the, got the win. So as looks like that'll go out of bounds, and Kukoska with another free kick for the Mount Lions. 38 minutes left to go in this first half. So far, I'm not, I don't know if there's anything. that No shots, no corner kicks, no nothing so far, but definitely a physical play. We're excited to see what these two teams bring. And it looks like it wasn't a free kick, just able to get it before it went out. Well, no uh, RMAC awards coming into this game for either side, although Kokoska has been honored as goalkeeper of the week before this season, a couple weeks back. But uh, So he is definitely one that can be counted on for the Mountain Lions. But once again, the defense for the Mountain Lions, very strong. They are uh, missing Aiden Schwenke, as we as we mentioned earlier, and that is he kind of plays that quarterback role for the mountain line defense, so his presence will probably be missed, but definitely other people that are more than willing and able to pick up the slack for the mountain line uh, defense. Definitely, as we see Westminster's Amano try to do something with it, can't send it back out to the far side. Westminster looks like they're, they're like I said, they're trying to make something work. That might be a corner kick opportunity. If it went out, no, it last touched by Westminster. So a free kick now by Kukoska. Not a lot of possession in the offensive quarter of the field for either side. Kind of hold up in the middle two quadrants. Not a whole lot of offensive uh, setups being made. Everything that does start to look like an offensive opportunity is quickly stomped out by the defense for either side. We've just seen a couple of breaks, but we'll see if that opens up as this goes as Anderson's tripped. Yeah, and that puts up a free kick opportunity for the Mount Lions just outside the top of the box. So all of a sudden it looks like a potentially early opportunity now for UCCS as I think Anderson's going to take this first free kick opportunity. Doing the math in my head about 14 yards out from the top of the box. Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, a uh, season ago, Anderson led all of the offensive categories for the Mountain Lions. Definitely a guy that they missed at the early part. He was dealing with an injury. He came back in last week and was able to score almost immediately once he was back in the game. So they're very happy to have him back in the lineup, and his presence will be felt rather quickly. So we have Anderson and Ranieri. It'll be Ranieri taking a kick direct on the goal and a good save there for the Griffins. And Ian Rose, the starting keeper for the Griffins, fourth in the Armac and goals against average so far this season. Yeah, goalkeeping is definitely not the issue for either of these teams. Very strong, but... Not a whole lot of good luck going either way for these teams. Kind of, like I said earlier, mixed bag of wins and losses, but they're going to try and remedy that here today. Souter doing his best to try to take that ball away, but a good job from Neely from Westminster. And Neely is still trying to do his best while, while, the, while the Mountain Lions do their best to try to take it away as well. Westminster able to kind of clear it out, try to kind of calm things down a little bit. Amano at midfield for... Westminster, now a deep ball down over to Moss, a little too far for Moss, and it'll be a throwing opportunity now for UCCS, and that'll be for Vininica. Please say that for me. <laughs> I, over I, there, yes. I practiced it about 10 times this morning, I still, so. It's a, it's a hard one for sure, yeah. Uh, Bogdan is kind of in and out of the lineup, uh, sometimes starting. When he doesn't start, he does come in. Uh, kind of first substitution for this team does get the start today with uh, some of those players like Grotley missing uh, and players like Souter and Vidernikov both. Those are the guys that head coach Lewis Wilcox is going to turn to in the absence of those other guys and look for them to pick up the slack. As you mentioned, Lewis Wilcox, head coach for Mount Lions in his first season on the as a head coach for UCCS. On the other sideline, Josh Pittman, his sixth season for the Westminster Griffins over on the far sideline. So, And talking to both of those coaches before the game, they both said on either side it's a good team. They don't think that the records on either side kind of uh, accurately depict the ability of either of these teams, but they just want to 
kind of stay disciplined, stick to their own game, look for their opportunities when they present themselves, but not be too aggressive and get into any kind of trouble. But both teams, you can see that the coaches had lots of respect for either side, and we're excited to see how this one plays out. Oh, exactly. And so far, right now, one shot for UCCS off of that free kick from Ranieri. Otherwise, it's a relatively, statistically at least, quiet game as we approach the 15th minute mark here at Mount Lion Stadium. Both teams fighting for control a little bit. Westminster looks like they're going to be the ones to come up with Gavin Flitton. But UCCS doing their best to disrupt Westminster, and it looks like it might be the first clean opportunity now for the Mount Lions, as on the far side with Souder. Souder on the left side kicks it in. I think that was a cross trying to get him for Anderson, but deflected, and Ian Rose there to cover it up for the Griffins. A great job there by Souder. He, he read that play the whole way, came down, uh, tried to make the corner. He actually banked it off of Brendan Neely, the midfielder for the Griffins, almost right back onto net, almost went in, but good positioning there by Rose right there, was ready for anything and made the save. Exactly. Good quality teams for both teams. Both teams trying to kind of see what they can make some noise in the Armac this season. Both teams have been outside of that, that main title picture for a little bit of time now, but definitely have the foundation and, and the building blocks to try to make some moves in the conference this season with really the first good full season in two years for both these teams after the COVID spring season last spring. And so both teams, I think, now finally back into their grooves season-wise, now a month into the year. As Westminster, they try to pull it in from left side, but a good breakup for the Mount Lions. And an opportunity now for the Mount Lions. Deep ball, and I believe that's Anderson. Anderson, one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper. Ian Rose with a great opportunity to keep that away, and Westminster cleans up. Yeah, Anderson's kind of kicking himself a little bit. Slow to get off the field. He's all right. He's just mad. But great job by Rose coming out, cutting down the angle, making uh, Anderson make a decision quickly about what he was going to do and uh, ultimately making that save on one of the more feared scorers for the Mountain Lions. No, exactly. And a great job by goalkeeper Rose to, as you said, play that well, because that could have gone bad really fast, one-on-one -on -one opportunity like that. Foul against the Mountain Lions, and Westminster's going to try. It looks like in, in the process went a little too far away from the where the foul spot was for the referee's taste. And they get it ball quickly, and Amano with the ball passing it over to Neely. At the top now, and a little bit of traffic there broken up. And good position by the Mountain Lions to allow Kokoska to pick that up. The Mountain Lions, their defensive strategy, they kind of like to muddy up the middle of the field a little bit. Uh, not a whole lot of specific shielding patterns, but just kind of make things dirty in the middle of the field. Good job keeping that one in by Souter. Uh, they are going to say it went out. It was almost impressive. but it was. I, I, I can't say I disagree. That was a little bit... It was, impre it was good that he was able to pull it down that quickly, but. To pick up where I left off there, they just want to dirty things up in the middle of the field a little bit, not give the offensive any clear passing lanes or anything. Disruptions, the name of the game for sure. Uh, that's exactly what we've seen thus far, and they just kind of like to funnel that back down into an easy pickup for their goal cut goalkeeper Kokoska and that's exactly what we've seen thus far from the Mount Lion defense. Mount Lions trying to trying to move something down there. Westminster finally able to kind of clear it off a little bit or reset as we just passed the 15 minute mark here in the first half. Still tied at nothing, zero to zero between Westminster and UCCS. Westminster taking their time, definitely moving the ball down the field. And now a deep ball just a little bit past the reach of Zach Moss who is trying to come in to clean it up. And Kukoska now with the opportunity. Westminster has yet to record a shot. The Mount Lions, while they haven't had a whole lot of possession time, uh, the Griffins kind of holding it at midfield for most of the time. They have been leading with three shots thus far. Uh, they do like to kind of hold back, and like I said, they wait for their opportunities, and then they come quick once they see them. No, exactly. Mount Lions now with that chance right now. Ranieri. And again, trying to pass it up to Anderson. Can't quite make that connection, but definitely making the goalkeeper, Ian Rose, definitely work for that shutout so far. 
as now Westminster again being much more deliberative, deliberative in bringing the ball down the field. Now on that far side with Keylander. Yeah, a little bit down. To help you guys a little bit, we're at field level and we're on the south end of the field. So anytime we see action on that north end, it's just a little bit more difficult for us. So please bear with us when we get down to that side of the field. We have the camera angles, which are definitely incredibly helpful. But just keep in mind that it, once we get down to that field, you know, numbers, everything else, just kind of get a little bit blurry for us. But we'll do our best to keep everyone updated as we have a really just a was turning into a beautiful October 1st day here in Colorado Springs. And a good opportunity there, a little bit high, a little bit too much for that for Westminster, but a good opportunity there. First, uh, this should be, I believe, the first shot for them of the day. Sebron Russell is going to come in in place of number three, Adam Baldwin. They kind of play that uh, far side flex player, one that likes to jump true midfielder I should say uh, jumps back onto defense but not afraid to jump in on offense and uh, Russell has definitely had his impact felt by this team just as Baldwin has they are very interchangeable on that other side for the Mountain Lions and right now Westminster again being very deliberative they're not going to from what it looks like, take too many chances, or at least they do, is going to be very calculated. So they they have a they're very comfortable pulling it back as they center that ball down to the, and that down to the net. Zach Moss can't quite get it, ends up kicking it out of bounds, and it'll be a free kick for UCCS. While we have an opportunity, a name that we haven't talked about for Westminster, Alex Tholen, a defender normally, but about a, a now about two months ago. Uh, you know, diagnosed with, he went in, um, and now I, I lost my thing, but, you know, it went in on October 11th to, to have a, uh, what they say, a 10-pound tumor removed from his abdomen. Uh, in the process, they found a few more tumors in there, and in the, it just as they keep going, they, they, they kind of find more and more. What it is, it, it, they, they know it's incurable. They're, they're doing their best to treat it. All of our best wishes go out to Alex and his family. If you're interested, the family has set up a GoFundMe account. So far, that's raised $42,000. Uh, the reason I found that it was on Zach Moss's Instagram page. So, uh, but that link we posted on UCCS social, the, the men's soccer social media accounts. If you're interested to learn more about all the struggles that Alex is going through, please make sure as, oh my goodness, as we come back to live action, a shot off the post for Seaburn who just came in. Great opportunity for the Mount Lions, but wrapping up on Alex, uh, a terrific young man. We wish him all and his family the best of luck. Uh, just a, against insurmountable odds from everything that we can tell. Yeah, never something you want to see. Definitely give if you can. As we come back here. Oh, another great opportunity for Mount Lions blocked by Ian Rose. He has had two spectacular saves on top of that shot that just went off the post. Yeah, Souter point blank there, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, standing tall was Rose. Definitely got his arms out and was able to get an arm on that one to push it back. Unfortunately, Anderson wasn't able to regroup fast enough to get another shot on, but a great opportunity for the Mountain Lions after the post shot from Russell. Another opportunity for Anderson. He can't quite get that down, down there in time. The Mount Lions, all of a sudden, I, I was trying to find the right moment to talk about Alex Solon, so I apologize. And I thought we were going to have a good opportunity there for an extended time to talk about him, but uh, Mount Lions definitely capitalizing on some opportunities there in the last few minutes. Looks like Zach Moss is going to get a foul here. Getting an explanation from the middle ref. Stop the clock. Something's going on. Something is going on. I didn't see a card come out unless he's going to... It looks like he's going to give a bench player, a coach, the card. Looks like that's going to be on the head coach, Josh Pittman, over there for the Griffins' first yellow card that we've seen today. Interesting that for a, a what, I, what seems to be a relatively quick card, so... Right. Um, it's hard for us to hear what's being said all the way over here. I'm sure that 
This is not the first time he's heard from over there if they're already getting a card, but... Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. So it's a, a quick card against a, the Westminster bench with 24 minutes left to go in his first half. And Mount Lions with a couple of really, really solid scoring opportunities already here in the first half of this first half. Yeah, it looked like Zach Moss was charged with a foul there, and he was kind of pleading his case and was given a, a explanation by the middle ref and then throughout that is when he went over to give the card to the opposing sideline. So clearly some words being exchanged, but they got it all figured out at the end of the day. Exactly. As Luke Merrill comes in for the Griffins in place of, it looks like, Luis Martinez, and we've seen Martinez quite a bit in the mix of everything. Not the one taking the shots, but definitely uh, what looks like that glue for Westminster, uh, at least so far in these first 20 minutes. As Westminster, again, kind of being deliberative, Nielsen passing the ball up to Moss, and Moss able to get the cutter in the Griffins as they continue to move down the field. That's Hasanovic. And now back up top to center to Amano. And I apologize. You guys can see as clearly as we can. Definitely just kind of keeping the ball in the periphery as that ball goes a little bit wide. And some outlines now have opportunity. And it looks like Souter is going to try. It looked like he was going to try to go a little bit quicker. But yeah. outlines slow it down a little bit. He gets his uh, team a chance to move up the field, passes it back into Vadernikov. He's going to set something up on the other side. But, yeah, it looked like they were going to try and rush play a little bit, see if they could catch the Griffins in transition, but slowing it down, setting something up as Reeves skies that one real high. And now back, and I was just going to have a little too much on that kick from McGuire. McGuire is the captain for this Mountain Lions men's team, definitely one of those uh, vocal leaders for them, definitely leads by example and a, a strong player on and off the field. And Anderson had got had an opportunity to get that a little bit further, but kicked out of bounds by Jace Vance of Westminster. And so a little bit of time to reset Colby McNary, or Ranieri, excuse me, to throw the ball in with 21 and a half to play. Yeah, Ranieri's going to take his time over here. Let them get set up in the middle, see if he can get something going. So you see McGuire come down into the box. Big body down there for sure. Just at the top of the box, if we were to extend it out, headed out by Westminster. I couldn't see who it was since they were behind McGuire, but Westminster controls it down. And trying to move down in transition, UCCS able to get enough feet in there to break it up and slow the Griffins down. Yeah, Liam McGuire is... He's a big man in there, 6'5", 195 pounds. Not somebody you want to mess with by any means, but just kind of their strategy there. Place him right in front of the goal. Use his size to his advantage. Try and get a mismatch in the box. UCCS throws the ball in. Souder there loses his footing a little bit, but able to maintain possession of the ball. Passes nice it. Exactly. Nice move against that defender. And can't quite come up with it as Zamora Reeves. But that was a great opportunity, great look to make that happen. And now a foul called against Sejic. Yeah, Luca, I'm not really sure what he was expecting there. He was right in front of the ref, gave him a nice good shove. Easy call for the middle referee. Uh, if I had a quarter for every time that Lewis Wilcox yelled the words, we don't need to this season, I would be doing pretty well for myself. <laughs> uh, kind of the name of the game for the Mountain Lions, their struggle is those meaningless fouls. Not not sure why uh, they need to have those. That's what they're looking to clean up and certainly one of the big points for Coach Wilcox this season. Out of bounds, which would mean set up, uh, set up the free kick for Kukoska. Just past 20 minutes left to go in his first half. Still t score still tied at nil-nil. As UCCS winners of three of the last four coming into this game, Westminster have alternated wins and losses ever since September 9th as that ball's put into play. Anderson tries to tap it up, and Westminster able to clear it out from at least 
imminent danger in front of their box. Sussex fighting for that one, not able to come up with it. And a good takeaway there for the outlines as Zamora Reeves sends it out to the far side. As Russell. And now Mount Lions take a little bit of time, send it back out to midfield. As Westminster just doing a good job. It seems like just clogging the passing lanes, making sure that everybody is where they need to be. And for those opportunities where you see Merrill getting that takeaway for the Westminster Griffins. Yeah, they were looking for Souter on this near sideline to us and not quite the leg for it. As a good opportunity now for Westminster, cleared out by the Mount Lions as Russell pretty much brought that all down the line. It'll be Souter against Amano. Amano oh, able to take it away. Fancy footwork there by Amano. As Westminster able to regain control just in front of the Mount Lion goal. And now a half, half field. And again, Westminster perfectly content to kind of pass the ball around, wait for the opportunities to build and develop, and then strike when they can. And now that ball goes out of play, and Kukoska will have the opportunity to send the deep for the Mount Lions. Just under 18 to play here in the first half. Credit to the Mountain Lion defense. There's been a couple of those kind of fast break down the field for the Griffins, but they're holding their lines, kind of moving in uh, very methodically and, and funneling that down and fizzling out any chance that the Griffins have really before it becomes a true threat. Ball goes down deep. First Mountain Lion who tried to do it, Anderson, also sends it down deep and no one there to get it. So it'd be another free kick on the other end from Ian Rose. Get some substitutions coming in here for the Griffins. And again, without knowing their first for the, and we do, we're thankfully to the PA 28 Cole Karchner. Again, without numbers on the front, we either have to wait for them to turn around or something else to figure out who these players are. <laughs> And now along the far sideline, I believe that's Hasanovic. Now back top to the center. Opportunity to come to the near side if they want to, but it looks like Moss is content to send it down a little bit further to Hasanovic. Back to Amano. And back into now Ward. Ball's put into play into the box. It is knocked out and finally controlled by Kokoska. As the, Hasanovic was the, looks like the intended target of that pass. Five to one shot advantage here in the opening half for UCCS. As Mount Lions looks like they make an opportunity here with Russell on that far side. Russell being double teamed and looks like it turned out in favor of Westminster. They able to maintain control of that possession. And get it back up top now to the near side over to Merrill. Merrill with plenty of room to work with, but again being double teamed by two UCCS student athletes and UCS able to get the takeaway maybe and they are able to send it down the field. We'll see if it's uh, good enough for Anderson. But good job there for Vance to send it back. Amano now to near side over to Neely, crossing the midfield line. And now ball goes over to Merrill, hugging the near sideline. Back into the middle to Neely. Now back to Amano. Amano with the shot, blocked it, or saved, I'm sorry, by Kukoska. Shot opportunity there for Amano and a good save from Kukoska keep this a nil-nil game. Yeah, Amato has really been all over the field. He's had an impact on all parts of the field and good job kind of getting some space to himself in the middle of the field, finding a shot lane and putting a good shot on net, but good position by Andreas Kinkoska. And he was right where he needed to be, he made the easy save. Westminster regrouping, Neely there, passing it back over to Moss, crossing the midfield line, and a uh, good attempt there, and they will end up calling that against Dulong for UCCS. 
Good slide tackle there, but a little too rough for the center rest taste. Westminster with the ball now on the far sideline in front of the UCCS bench. Trying to get into that corner to send it in. A couple of options. Moss wide open on the far post. As a mono trying to do something with it. And a shot by Ward goes wide left. Yeah, as you said, Moss was all by his lonesome on the far post. Souter picked him up, realized that he was there all by himself and came in and took that pass away. But I think they were learning, starting to move the ball over towards his direction and Souter, good defensive play, good defensive read, picked up on it, moved in and took that passing lane away. Good chances for both teams, 13 and a half left to play in this first half. As Kokoska sends it down deep, Moss heads it up, but ultimately controlled by UCCS, trying to send it down to the far sideline. Not enough, or sorry, a little bit too far for Russell to be able to pull that in. Throw it for Westminster Griffins in front of their bench. Trying to find an opportunity for putting, send it into someone. They finally able to get it in, but a really good job there by Kotimov to try to at least disrupt him as much as he as much as he can. Yeah, Camille is definitely one of those uh, mid-game guys for the Mountain Lions come in, add some energy, kind of run all over and disrupt things is the name of the game for Camille Katamoff, and that's exactly what he's done thus far. I've already seen him harass four different players since he's been in, but that's his job, and he does it very well. So an opportunity now for UCCS. I'm not sure if you can hear. The wind has definitely picked up here at Mount Lion Stadium, going from the south to the north or left to the right. So it'll be interesting to see how much that plays into it. It's not gale force winds by any means, but definitely a strong wind. It, we're, we're struggling to keep all of our papers here. Yes. Uh, since we are not enclosed in any way, so we are enjoying the sun just like everybody else. But it'll be interesting to see Westminster now with the wind at their back, if they can take advantage of that. That can work both ways. It's a little too strong. If a, if a, you know, a kick is a little too strong, if the wind picks up too much, at the same time, you have to kick against it for the Mount Lions. There's definitely a lot of physical play down there, and I think the the midfield ref is kind of establishing that he's going to allow some of that that physical play within reason. So as long as you are keeping your hands about yourself, your feet to the ball, you can harass each other a little bit, kind of get that physical part of the game in. But if the line is crossed, that he will blow that whistle. Exactly. That shot by Hasanovic just off to the left. So Kokoska with the free kick opportunity sends it deep down the field with 11.15 to play in his first half. And goes off a couple of players. Last touched by Russell. Looks like Russell. it was Sebrin Russell, yeah. yeah. As Mount Lions looks like they might try to put something together. Uh, Russell makes up for his mistake and gets the ball right back for the Mount Lions. Now back over to McGuire in the center. As we see Sussex on our far, on our near sideline wide open, but Mount Lions down there in front of their bench in front of this far side. McGuire with the ball in the center. Now goes back over to Sussex on our side of the field. Sasich now back over to DuLong. And DuLong decides to bring it down the field a couple of yards, sends it in deep where we have Kamatov. Kahadam. <laughs> Please help me. <laughs> Katamoff. Yes. Katamoff, thank you. <laughs> Just a few names. Trust me, people. I did practice this in the mirror this morning. <laughs> they are not easy by <laughs> any means. As Mount Lion's able to get that one in, but Westminster ultimately controls it. But a good opportunity there by Zamora Reeves to at least disrupt it. And it looks like it worked enough. Mount Lion's able to regain control in the center of the field. Would you believe me if I told you that Camille Katamov's from Aurora, Colorado? <laughs> I would not have guessed, but I mean, yeah, it's uh, definitely a, a lot of international flavor, which is also, it just, it's so cool to see on the men's soccer side. You don't see that same thing on the women's side of the game as much at the college level. Yeah, well, that just speaks to the, the reputation that this UCCS soccer program has bringing people in from abroad you you don't get those players without a a well reputed uh a well said reputation i should say exactly 
Just over nine minutes to play as that ball sent in deep. Headed away by Westminster, and it looks like Westminster is ultimately going to control it with Nielsen in the center of the field. Over to Amano. Amano. And now that ball sent in deep by Westminster. It's going to be a little too much for any play to be put on that as Kukoska decides to scoop it up. Beautiful sunny day here, October. You can see, depending on the background, some leaves starting to turn here in Colorado Springs. As Amano decides to head it, UCCS heads it and ultimately it lands at the feet. Good job by Sechic jumping in. And he's going to bring it all the way down to field. A shot by him, and it's stopped by Ian Rose. At least his third save that I can count. Yeah, some big ones coming from Rose, especially that early one on Souter, one on one, just the two of them in the box. But he has definitely been up to the task for anything that the Mountain Lions have thrown at him thus far. Definitely, just shut out. He has earned that shutout so far here in the first half. Eight minutes left to go in this first half. And it looks like Westminster will pass it over to the near side to Neely. And then just a little bit of disruption. UCCS looks like they were able to earn the turnover, see if they can keep possession of it as they send it all the way down to Russell, but not quite able to. Nielsen over to Moss for Westminster. Yeah, Merrill on that last possession lost his footing for a second, did a good job of not uh, dropping his hand down on the ball to get his his balance back, but he has that down there as it's knocked away. It looks like it'll be a Westminster throw-in. Westminster throw-in, they're gonna get a two, two new sets of legs. Looks like UCCS might try to capitalize this on well by getting another player in. Yeah, it looks like it's number 12, Justice Schlander coming in and as well his, his uh, counterpart, Number 23, Leo Polikoff, both coming in for the Griffins. Nice throwing opportunity right into the box, but able to get it out are the Mount Lions. And Souter's turning it up. Exactly, trying to get this transition back and forth between Souter and that looks like that is Schlander, I believe. That 27, is. yep. But Skylar Schlander, not the one who just checked in. Yes, both of the brothers playing for this Griffin squad. They, they said on that last one that Schlander was holding uh, Souter back, excuse me, that Souter had the advantage. So they're going to give the Mount Lions a free kick. Sussex will take it back. Six minutes left here in this opening half. Both, either team would love to have a goal, take some momentum into halftime as Mount Lions able to send that to one a little bit. Westminster trying to break it up. We'll see if they know Mount Lions able to control it as they send it back to Zamora Reeves. Reeves over to near side, trying to go to Souter, broken up by Westminster. Westminster able to maintain control, but it looks like it'll be a foul against, I believe that will go against number 25 for Westminster? Yes, it was. Ooh. I know, that was when we were both working. Uh, Falkenberge for, for the uh, Griffins had his hands uh, across on Sechic. Uh, immediately, Luca threw his hands up, said, hey, man, he's grabbing me. That would be a hold even in the NFL. Yeah. Easy to see when you have your, your hand across your counterpart's chest, but it'll be Ranieri with the free kick. And he's going to send it right in. No one touches it, ends up going right there. We had about four different options, I feel like, for UCCS. Yeah, it looked like Seaburn Russell was trying to come in and get the header or a slide kick off on that one. Yeah. Unable to. As Fernandez comes in for Sejic with just under five minutes to play here in the opening half. Yeah, Fernandez, one of those guys, kind of bubble guy for this Mountain Lions team, doesn't see a whole lot of playing time, but definitely takes advantage of it when he does. Comes to the field with a lot of energy and getting a lot more time on the field because of it. Again, Westminster being very deliberative, a deep ball, which you don't see very often from them unless they think they have the chance. 
and a header and it's headed up Sebron went flying there for a moment i don't think they're going to call anything kind of got tripped up the legs tangled but they're yeah. going to check on him clock will still run agreed no call And that will allow Kukoska to send the ball down the field. Yeah, whenever Kukoska has the ball, he's got a big leg. You'll always see the mountain lions start to slide back and give him that long ball. And two mountain lions there is one of the Westminster players. That is Nielsen goes down. He's taking a while to get up, but he is. And they are going to stop the clock for Nielsen. Nielsen arguing that he should have gotten a f something called. I believe he was arguing that that call should have been going against Fernandez. Yeah, it was kind of a 50-50 ball. Both of them went up. Uh, unfortunately, on the way back down, Fernandez's head caught the kind of chin area of Nielsen. He was looking for the foul call. Happened so quick for him, I could see how he thought there might be one there, but just a soccer incident, no foul needed. Exactly, both teams, both players going up for the ball as Westminster now looking to try to take advantage and transition here on the far corner. Ricocheted off, Westminster able to maintain control as that's number 14, Luke Merrill, trying to do something for the Griffins. And UCCS looks like they're trying to take that takeaway. That's number 17, Kamatov. And still in play, Westminster able to retain control. 2.45 left to go in this opening half. In that far corner, a couple of options. Neither of them particularly good in the middle. Mount Lion's able to clear it out. As now, cut him off. Trying to get something there in the midfield. Trying to be a disruptor there for the Griffins. Yeah, credit to the UCCS defense. They're really pushing everything to the outside and to the bottom. So if they are able to get one down further the field, they're pushing them down towards that end line. And if they're coming up the field, they're keeping them out towards that sideline. Makes it really easy to keep it out of harm's way for the mount lines and really hard for the Griffins to set anything up offensively. Credit to the defense. And and credit to the defense right there. Shot attempt gets blocked. It kicks get, gets kicked out. Westminster able to maintain control. Just under two to play. Score still tied at nil-nil. As we have Merrill there in the center again for Westminster. Again, not a whole lot of good options. Anyone who is in position in the center is being pretty well guarded by the mount lines. As two players go down, it'll be a foul called against, I believe, Westminster. I don't think they're going to give him a card. Just a warning on this one. Looks like it was, I think that Seabrin Russell down there for the Mountain Lions took a, took a nice little tumble, but nothing hurting for him. Kukoska's going to take this free kick for the Mount Lions as we close in on a minute. Probably the last really good opportunity for the Mount Lions to set something up as Westminster tries to disrupt it. Looks like they might be successful. Uh, Souter able to clean it up for the Mount Lions. Souter and Merrill going after it and it'll be out of bounds. Last touch by Souter. Great body position there by uh, that was Merrill. Luke Merrill for the Griffins. Didn't foul, came around, cut off the angle, and got the the ball on his foot and was able to bank it off of Souter, get the throw in for his team as the Mountain Lions are able to do here with Fernandez. But and it looks like they're going to be overruled. Looks like, again, 30 seconds to go. Merrill, just in that last 20 seconds, just battling. Mount Lions throwing everything they could at him, and Merrill doing a really good job to hold his own. Yeah, just muddying things up there for the Mount Lions, making it hard. Yeah. Merrill right there, trying to get back into the center. 15 seconds left to go in his first half. Uh, an opportunity now. They're going to send it into the middle. That kick by Karchner is blocked. And and Merrill trying to get it in. Blocked once again for the Mount Lions. And it's headed out for UCCS. And that will be the end of the first half. A physical game, 0-0 tie so far through 45 minutes as UCCS doing a really good job. Both teams, honestly, UCCS and Westminster doing a very good job of really playing their game. Westminster much more comfortable being 
deliberative, I would say. Uh, UCCS being much more aggressive when they need to be. Quick analysis going into the second half. What's it going to take for you one of these teams to punch one in? Well, we've seen the clock has been moving the whole time, and what that means to me is lots of clean soccer being played, not a lot of interruptions, only a couple of fouls. We had the one yellow card on the Griffins bench, but uh, you just want to keep setting things up. The, we've seen it on both sides. The Mountain Lions defense has been really good about fizzling up fizzling out excuse me the setups for the griffins and they've had much more offensive opportunity getting their their setups through but just keep grinding on defense keep moving those players to the outside of the field and towards the baseline cutting down those angles uh on defense and for the offense on either side move that ball find a way to get a hole into the middle of the field and uh try and capitalize when those opportunities arise no definitely once again halftime here mount lion stadium uccs and westminster tight zero to zero we'll be back in just under 15 minutes as we get ready for a second half here you're watching uccs and westminster men's soccer It only takes one. Imagine bridging the gap that keeps students from achieving their dreams. Imagine making the difference in the life of just one student, fueling his or her success and that of an entire community. It only takes one person. At UCCS, our students come from working families. They work multiple jobs. They're the first in their families. They overcome obstacles and they want an education that will fuel their success and help them shape the world. It only takes one person willing to start a movement. UCCS students will change our collective future, but they need our help. Many fall through the cracks each year. Their focus on schoolwork suffers from financial pressures. Together, we can fuel their success through a campaign that is essential to our community, our region, and all of Colorado. One gift can fuel success. With your help, our students will step into the classroom with a breadth of opportunity at their fingertips. Experiential learning, faculty who care, growing facilities to accommodate a changing workforce, and research that can change the world. But it starts with one. One less sacrifice made. One less night shift. One less year to graduation. One more chance to focus on what's important. One more life-changing expert to learn from. One more amazing professional ready to join my team. One more reason to stay and work in the Pikes Peak region. One more graduate of the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Remarkable outcomes are possible when you invest even in one person, one student, one future. You can start the movement. You can be the agent of change, shattering expectations for families, communities, companies, cities, states, generations. Collectively, each one of us can change the trajectory of the future. Your one gift, joined with others, will make a difference that lasts generations. That's when the power of one becomes the power of many. That's the power of UCCS. You can be the power of one. Things don't fall into place. They take root where you choose to dig. With thrive and diligence, power and spirit, nerve and heart. It's about effort, strength, intent, risk, 
and unwavering resolve. So leave your bubble, find your element, make your way. Clear a path for one, for some, for many. This is Westminster College, where success comes to those who don't rely on chance. Will you claim a life of consequence, where opportunity is really just energy and direction, and you? Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention, and hands-on experience, UCCS fuels success. I wanted more than a degree. So with innovative courses and affordable tuition, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. I always dreamed of being an engineer. It encompassed everything that excited me when I was younger. And my first job in the military was an aviation mechanic, which kind of led me to come here to UCCS. UCCS fits a niche that none of the others do. It's the that first generation kid that wants to go to college. And if we're able to successfully help that kid through college, they can become an incredibly productive member of the community, and odds are, if they become a college graduate, their children and their grandchildren are gonna become a college graduate. It's gonna seem hard, it's gonna seem impossible, but it's not. I mean, I picked a pretty hard degree, and I'm, I'm almost done, and I've been a single parent the entire time. 70% of our students work and go to school. First of all, I would love to see them supported, but they're also entering the workforce with that work ethic in their mind. That means they are gonna hit the ground running and make a difference for the organizations they work for. I've had some pretty hard financial crisis during my time in school. Um, adulting is hard, for sure. <laughs> but I'm not sure I would have been as successful during this time without that aid as I have been because after my first year, it's, it's been there, it's helped me and I've continued to work harder because of it because I don't wanna let these people down. You know, they're investing in me and my future and, and I want them to be proud of what they put their time and money into. When you provide a scholarship to a student, that scholarship helps that students get through school, graduate and enter our community as an employer, as a leader, 
So really at the end of the day, our community benefits when our students are supported with scholarships. I can't tell you how many managers I've talked to who say, I'm always worried about where my next employee is going to come from, and where my next professional is going to come from. And isn't it terrific that we have so many well-qualified and well-trained students coming out of UCCS who can fill my employment needs. That's a big economic driver for Colorado Springs and the Pikes Peak region. A gift to UCCS is an investment in the students. It's an investment in their success because that is what UCCS cares about. They care about whether or not these students graduate and go out into the world and be successful. When you make an investment in the next generation of professionals, you're really making an investment in our community. I always dreamed of being an engineer, and now that I'm so close to graduation, I've got an internship, I feel like I'm well on my way to accomplishing that dream. When we think about golf swing analysis, what we're doing is we're trying to analyze someone's golf swing. Um, typically, people want to come in and get analyzed because they have pain or because they want to increase performance. Probably most people want to do both. Golf is a very technique-driven sport, um, but it also requires support from doing strength and power stuff as well. Um, the fun thing about getting your golf swing analyzed is that you can see, hey, I don't have a lot of shoulder mobility and that's why my swing is not as efficient as it could be. So at the Hibble Center we are trying to create three different levels. Um, so for the level one assessment somebody will come in, we'll get a golf history intake, um, we might do some height, weight, or body composition measurements and then we take them through the TPI screen. It stands for Titleist Performance Institute. After that we put them on the track man, we have them hit a couple shots, we just get some average um, data points in terms of club speed, ball speed, uh, and then what we do is we take what we see in the TPI screen, any limitations, we take them through a couple of exercises, and then we put them back on the track man to see if that helps improve it or doesn't improve it. Um, but the ultimate goal is to give them something to do at home, and then they would go through um, the screen again and hopefully see some improvement in those performance measures. If somebody wanted a swing analysis, what they would do is they would email um, the Centura Sports Performance email, which is centurasportsperformance at centura.org, or they can call to schedule an appointment in the number 719-776-4928. The mountain lion is one of the strongest members of the feline family. The average mountain lion lives five times a day and consumes up to three times its weight in protein. It shares many characteristics with its domestic counterparts, the good and the bad. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion.
And back from halftime here at Mount Lion Stadium, UCCS and Westminster men's soccer teams tied at zero apiece as both teams get ready to come out here to start the second half. Just, you know, we kind of expected two evenly, fairly matched teams as we kind of expected. Uh, you know, just kind of trying to do it. Like Westminster definitely playing their game as we saw on the kind of the possession time. You know, a lot of Westminster's possession time spent in that just for lack of better terms, right to the left, right to the uh, midpoint line where we saw them passing the ball around a lot. Yeah, so most of the possession in the middle part of the field, uh, the Mount Lions and, and Griffins are pretty evenly matched in that department with 57-43 in uh, favor of the Griffins. But like we said, they, they control the, the possession, but they didn't really do much with it. And that's the truth on both sides. Mount Lions are up sh six shots to five, so just a little narrow advantage for them. Uh, lots of clean soccer we've seen today. Not a whole lot of uh, one yellow card, but it was on the bench. So even in terms of field play, it didn't really affect anything. So as long as they continue to play this clean game, it's going to probably be a pretty fast second half here. but. Uh, I mean, it's been really good soccer, good defense on both sides. They just need to look for an open opportunity, a hole in the defense, and see if they can take advantage. That's going to be the difference. And so you called out the overall shot advantage, but I'm going to zero in on shots on goal. Five to one shot on goal advantage. Five saves by Ian Rose in the between the poles for Westminster. A fantastic job for him to keep this a nil-nil game. As we are underway now here in the start of the second half, UCCS controlling the ball at early on and trying to get the ball downfield and quickly and trying to do to Souter with a shot that's going to go wide to the right of Rose and already 16 seconds in and a shot for the Mountain Lions. Yeah, the Mountain Lions like to come out fast. They did so in the first half. They just like to get things going, see if they can get the defense on their back foot, which is... Honestly, coming out of halftime, the way that this game has been going, a really good strategy. They've set things up very nicely on both sides. So if you can get that fast-moving pace and see if you can catch somebody off guard, that's going to be what is going to turn into an icebreaker goal for either side. Yeah, definitely. It reminds me to start of the, what Westminster women did to UCCS to start the game, a real quick shot down to the field. As we are now a minute in, and Westminster trying to control the tempo here. Switch in sides. They're now moving from the right to the left on your screen. UCCS going from left to right. UCCS with the wind at their back here in the second half. It's gusting is probably the best way to say it. It's gusting right now, but then we'll have, as right now, a, a gentle breeze. So, but right now, Westminster trying to do something with it. Good job by McGuire to break that up. Yeah, Liam McGuire was all over him, stayed with him the whole time, didn't give up any ground, and was able to recover and make the play defensively as Anderson. Yeah, Anderson bringing it down the ball pretty much the entire length of that side of the field and, and able to, is that going to be a penalty gonna kick? They're going to give him a penalty kick, I think. So a penalty kick opportunity, stop, clock has stopped with 43.26 to go, and this might be the opportunity for the Mount Lions to break this scoreless game. Well, and just like we talked about earlier, the Mount Lions moving fast down the field, trying to catch the Griffins in a mistake, and that's exactly what happens here. They trip up Alex Anderson, and he gets a penalty kick. And if anybody's taking a penalty kick, if you're the Griffins, this is exactly the guy that you don't want taking it. So a good opportunity for the Mountain Lions. Exactly. So Anderson against Rose here in 43-26 to go with the opportunity to break this 0-0 game. Anderson gets the whistle. Here comes the shot into the right corner. Mount Lions up one to nothing. Alex Anderson for the Mount Lions picking up his second goal of the season. Converting on his first penalty kick of the season. Mount Lions a combined five for five on penalty kicks so far this year. Yes, and as we talked about for Alex Anderson, he's missed most of the games that the Mount Lions has played. He's coming in only one game played. That was last weekend against Adam State right here at Mount Lions Stadium, his season debut, and almost immediately coming in after he was subbed into that game, he scored. And so he's two for two. Two games played, two goals scored. That's exactly what they need out of him. He's one of the big powerhouse guys for this Mount Lion offense, and that's exactly what he's been since he's been back. And so Mount Lion's able to break this tie and takes a 1-0 lead against Westminster here early in the second half. 
as Westminster now trying on the far sideline. Definitely hasn't changed the pace, still being very deliberative, being very patient to find the shot that, and trying to find the opportunity that works best for them. As they move the ball into the near side to Gavin Flitton, he, he crosses the half field line. Back over to Glitton, and now it'll be Hasanovic trying to do some action on his own. Hasanovic now into the center of the field to Merrill. Back over to Hasanovic. And I, it wasn't off. I think they're going to call a handball here. Free kick in the middle of the field for the Griffins. Yeah, both uh, Hasanovic immediately threw his hands up. The Mount Lions are saying that it went off of, it ricocheted off of a hip. But they're going to call a handball here. It looks like it may be Neely, I think. Neely, yep, is going to take it for. And Neely's been kind of that all-around guy in the midfield for the Griffins thus far. So nine yards outside the top of the box, so 27 yards to the goal. As Neely, a direct, a, a direct shot, it goes wide right of the net. Last touch. I don't think. Kuk I mean, obviously Kokoska got a piece of it, but it wasn't a save, was it? I don't know if it would have got in or not, but he definitely pushed it wide. It's going to be a corner kick now for the Griffins heading over there to take it is Amano, but yeah, I mean, six three build for. For Kokoska, he needed every inch to, to even get to that ball. I'm not sure if it would have gone in either way, but he definitely had an impact on it, stretching all the way out. First corner kick for either team. The ball is into the box and grabbed up Kokoska. Good hands. Didn't let anything happen with that. He moves it quickly down the field. Good ball for Anderson up front. And he's able to keep it in. Anderson able to keep it, but it's going to be kicked out by... Looks by like Sh it Shulander, yes. There, yep. And so the opportunity, they're going to let everybody kind of settle in and get everything ready. Just past four minutes here into the second half. UCCS with the one nothing lead and a throw-in coming up from DeLong. Great throw-in opportunity for him, and it's tried to be headed up by a couple people, and then Ian Rose jumps up to grab it and end play. Rose going to move it up quickly. But for the Griffins, they're not a whole lot going on offense. Uh, the Mountain Lions able to catch up with any of their setups and uh, stay with them as they move down the field in transition. But really, the one mistake by the Griffins defense tripping up Anderson to cause that penalty kick is the only mistake we've seen on any part of the field by either team up to this point. Very clean soccer, very fast moving, not a whole lot of clock stoppages or penalties or fouls on any part of the game. As we see now with Westminster, that's gonna be Strelander trying to get it centered in. It's knocked out by UCCS. Oh. Nice As job by Zamora Reeves to push him off of the ball and not take a foul there. Definitely, but the ball goes out of bounds. There'll be a throwing opportunity for Westminster. I'm not sure if Zamora Reeves knew how urgent it was to get that out. He looked like he was taking a little bit more time to clear it than he probably should have. Yeah, he was nearing the line a little bit faster than I think he thought he was, but good job turning the corner, getting the ball at least out of bounds, down the field, away from farm's way. That way they didn't couldn't set anything up on this side of the field for the Griffins. As Westminster again trying to do something on this near sideline, trying to send it in. It's tapped out of bounds by, I, I, I don't know if you can hear the crowd. It looked like it was last touched by Garrett Dulong. And we can hear, I don't know who that is, but I, I'm not quite sure I disagree with with the fans on that one. I, I, I think that Looks like this missed corner kick opportunity for Westminster. Yeah, Gavin Filton, uh, Flitton, excuse me, for the Westminster College, excuse me, was standing there in the in the corner, kind of asking for an explanation for the referee. Easy for me to say, and he gets one. Not real happy with it, but it's going to be a goal kick for the Mountain Lions. Yeah, Bas Kukoska sends it down the field for. UCCS, it goes out of bounds, last touched by UCCS, and it'll be a, I'm sorry, last touched by Westminster, it'll be a UCCS throw-in, as DuLong will have the honors for UCCS. Oh 
as Zamora Reeves now with the ball. And Mount Lion is trying to turn and make it down the field a little bit. Over to the right side, just missed that handoff. And a good takeaway now by Westminster. They're going to try to bring the ball down the field quickly in transition. A little bit weird for them to see them moving down this fast. Yeah, definitely push and play here. As we see Vance try to send it in, it's cleared out by UCCS. And cleared out once again, it'll go out of bounds into the crowd. And last touch by Westminster, and so be oh, it looks like they're gonna a foul. A Never mind. Tag. Yep, free kick here. Yeah. Good job by Sebrin Russell turning the corner on that one, getting a foot on it, just clear it out, get your defense set back up, especially in quick transition like that. We haven't seen a whole lot of that from the Griffins thus far, but uh, it's never a bad idea just to settle things down, get the ball out of bounds, and set your defense back up when they're coming quick in transition like that. Deep ball down the field for UCCS. They're going to try to get Seven. possession of it, and it will go out of bounds based on their assistant referee on the far sideline. Westminster throw in, and they're going to throw it in quickly. Yeah, Souter was really trying to get on his horse, but not able to get there as the mountain lines move it over to Russell. And an opportunity now for UCCS. Russell able to, to juke it out a little bit as we have Ranieri, and it's going to be kicked out of bounds. It's going to be a throwing opportunity, I believe, for Looks UCCS. Like it'll be UCCS. Yes. yes. Yep. It's hard to see that that far corner for us. Exactly, right down there, that corner. Thirty-six left to go in this first second in this game. As good ball thrown into the box for UCCS, bounced around several times. It's going to be a header by Seychitz that. Can't quite come down. The ball is now cleared out to center field. Still a play, a hard play there. It looks like it will be a foul called against the Griffins. And is that it's hard Souter? To see. Yeah, yeah, I think it is Souter. He went in pretty hard. He got a shoulder to the groin area, which no one ever likes. But yeah, he's He's definitely wreathing over there. He's going to take a few seconds. They're going to stop the clock, give him yeah. some time. Looks like the mountain lion trainer is isn't going to come out. There's no real, nothing she can really do for him on that one. Stretch him out and stand him up, see how he feels. 36-10 left to go in this ball game. UCCS up one to nothing. So what led up to this was a Westminster foul. So it'll be a free kick right around in that area for the Mount Lions. And then looking into some options to the center of the field. Looks like we've got an Anderson right in front of the, right in the box for the Mount Lions. We also have Russell near the top of the box. We've also got Sechich in the box as well. And it looks like also McGuire. So. McGuire with the height, you got Anderson who's got the foot, and it will just be a throw in from the sideline. Yeah, if they can get to him, but Rose. Good job on getting that one, take care of that. And he's gonna roll it in for the Griffins. Anderson trying to kind of disrupt there and that's the trailing mount line. But Griffins bringing it down the field at half at the midfield line and a good ball that's gonna be looks like Karchner on the far side. Uh, good good uh, challenge there, though, by Liam McGuire. Being right up on him, not grabbing him, though, keeping his hands to himself, not taking any unnecessary fouls, but giving him a hard time, making it difficult for him to get that ball into the middle. So it's going to be Schuliner to throw the ball in for the Griffins. Karchner in the box, as well as Nielsen. And now the rest of the Griffins fall into place. Headed out by the Mount Lions, headed out once again by Zamora Reeves, but controlled by Westminster at about the 35 yard line from the goal. Ball kicked over to Hasanovic into the near corner for where the camera positions are. Amano with the opportunity is going to take the shot, blocked and saved by Kukoska and cleared out by the Mount Lions. Good save by Kukoska. Not only by Kukoska on the save, but Kelton Hooker right there to clean up the loose change in the box for the Mount Lions. Clear it out of harm's way, get it back out, make them 
uh, the Griffins set back up and bring it back in. That might be about the best opportunity they've had in a this foul there, in a hard a foul. Card, yeah. yeah, it's going to go against Zach Moss. Yeah, that's Ranieri that had the ball, and he was leagues ahead of of Moss on that one, stuck his foot out and just tripped him up. Not even a shot at going for the ball there. It was clear intention, so easy card there for the middle ref, and it looks like McGuire is going to set things up and take this free kick for the Mountain Lions right at midfield. Yep, 34-43 left to go in this game. UCCS looking for the insurance goal. Western, Westminster looking to tie this goal up. Mount Lions in that far corner now trying to send it into the center. It's going to be off target and go out of bounds. They had Russell there. He was a little bit too far behind, and I think the the in ball from Souter on the other side was a little too hard in general, but a good look for the Mount Lions coming back down the field off of the yellow card. Vance with the ball now for Westminster coming down the football sideline line as Moss will not send it all across to the far side for Westminster. At the half, at the midfield line, I believe that was Nielsen, and yeah, he will, I'm sorry, that is Merrill getting tripped up by UCCS, a legitimate foul there against the Mount Lions. And they're gonna put the ball quickly. Amano with the ball for Westminster, gets it over to the near side. Still working, seeing what they can find, passing over to Flitton on this near side and tapped out of bounds by Dulong. Dulong quickly to get it back into Flitton. Now back over to Skylander and then to Flitton and trying to get in the center field but broken up by the Mount Lions. Mount Lions is not quite able to maintain possession and there'll be a mono for Westminster picking it up just outside the top of the box. Westminster working a one on three against in that particular situation. UCCS doing their best to get it clear. But again, Westminster not backing off on this one. Karchner with the ball now in the far corner. Yeah, both Setchich and Souter there for the Mount Lions getting a little bit turned around. They're gonna give it back to the Mount Lions here. Yeah, it looks like a foul against Karchner. But yeah, especially in the middle for uh, Lucas Setrich, he the ball squirted out to him, but he got a little bit turned around and uh, did a little do -si do in the middle. And in that time, it was Schlander came over and, and moved the ball out of that area for the Griffins, kept the offensive threat alive. Deep ball down to midfield for Kukochka. And ultimately kicked out of bounds. So it's going to stay in bounds for Westminster. Yeah. They're able to clean it up. Little pinball action over there. Yeah, down that far side now. A deep ball down the midfield. But uh, we'll see who ultimately controls it. Looks like it's going to be McGuire who's going to kick it downfield. But it's just two Griffins there to clean it up. Nice job by McGuire coming out of nowhere and cleaning that one up, clearing it downfield for the Mountain Lions. As now on this near sideline at the UCCS letters on the field. And now Westminster trying to bring it back to center a little bit, but what UCCS just doing a good job just being a nuisance and clogging the lanes. Yeah, the Griffins really haven't spent very much time on this side of the field. Oh my goodness, a great goal over there by this Luke Merrill. So as we were saying, Mount Lions were trying to clog everything up. Luke Merrill from about 15 yards out, able to get the equalizer into the left corner, beating Kukochka. And it's a 1-1 game with 31-52 left to play. Yeah, right as I'm saying that they're not spending a whole lot of time, Luke Merrill says, oh yeah, you think so? How about this? And comes right on in, a nice ball for him. Just placed it right in the perfect spot. Kokoska laid out for it, but couldn't quite get to it. Perfect speed and placement from Merrill on that shot. Unfortunate for the Mountain Lions, but like we said, both transition goals that we've seen, although for Anderson, we saw it come off of the, the penalty kick that was caused by a transition play, but this one was in transition purely for the Griffins. Uh, perfect play by Merrill coming in with speed and placing that in the right spot. As we kind of said, nothing particularly flashy about that. It was just a really good shot of Luke Merrill picking up his second goal of the season. First, Griffin with multiple goals so far this season as it has been an incredibly consistent and balanced offensive attack as we mentioned in our pregame. And so now 31-27 left to go. Westminster with the ball once again, bringing the ball down the field in the near sideline. And in the center once again, Almano with the ball for the Griffin, sending it over to the far sideline. Ball goes in once again, 
as Karchner trying to do something with it. And another, yeah. it looks like, injury. Remember what I said about we don't need to for the Mountain Lions? That was exactly the same thing, but for the Griffins, there was an absolutely no need for that foul. It was going out of bounds anyway, but that was number 28, Cole Karchner coming in. Pretty hard foul on the end line, honestly, and the ball is going out of bounds. What What's the purpose for that? I mean, you're, they're going to get a goal kick either way, but now you have a caution card. So if anything else happens in this game coming your way, you're, you're not only out for this game, but for the next game that these Griffins play as well. So really needless, just let that ball go out of bounds, come back on defense and try and get the goal kick that's inevitably, inevitably coming anyway. Easy for me to say. <laughs> As that ball's kicked out of bounds by Sussex, it'll be a throw-in opportunity for Westminster. Russell and did come up from that fall a little slow, but it looks like he's back moving normally. And I believe that's Amano just based on the hair, since we don't can't see the front. <laughs> of, we don't have the numbers on the front, but we're learning them as we go. As now we have Shulander passing the ball back around. It goes over to to Flitton, Flitton over to Amano. Amano over to the far side, broken up a little bit. It'll be Moss to collect it and reset it for Westminster. Yeah, Amano with the nice little blonde top makes it easy for us over here. Exactly, Amano with the shot blocked by, it looks like McGuire, ultimately picked up by Amano and that one is saved by Kukoska. Yeah, we talked about it early in the game, but this Amato, he's a relentless. He follows his own shot. McGuire with a nice defensive play to block that one away, but Amato coming right back in to, to play it even further. Nice little catch over there by the Lewis Wilcox <laughs> on the bench, by the way. Credit where credit is due. That was a cool one. That's right, and Westminster moving the ball quickly down the field, but he does Karcher on that far sideline, just being annoyed, but and he's able to break Sussex and another opportunity. Oh, Merrill almost getting a second goal of the season. Another shot goes off the bar for Westminster. I believe that is Hasanovic. Hasanovic still, and uh, yes. That's going to be a trip. And it, it could be a, it, it's it be within the box. the box. So it's oh. going to be a free kick. Just barely right on the line there. And and Hasanovic really wanted that, that one to be a penalty kick, but and, and whether we can see it or not, I mean, it is, Hasanovic is a good one or two yards inside the box. Yes. But the center ref is going to say, no, it's going to stay outside. Yeah, it did fall into the box, and that's what they're going to say is right outside the line. That's inches from the box for Hasanovic. But credit in the middle to, uh, to Sussex. He was just staying strong, moving that one to the outside. Unfortunately, they took the trip there, but not... Not the worst spot you can have a free kick. They did they did avoid the penalty, which is the important part, but a very big opportunity here for the Griffins. They're about six yards inside from the end line, so not a lot of chance for an offside so opportunity. Oh, a great shot by, by Shulander. Headed out, I think, off of someone's face to go that far out. Yeah, it looked like it was uh, Garrett DeLong on there for the Mountain Lions, just getting his, his head right in the way of that one probably didn't feel very good for him but uh you got to stick your neck out every once in a while and he sure did on that one so looking at the shot count with 28 minutes left to play it was six to five in favor of uc says at half it's now 11 to eight in favor of westminster westminster six to two out shooting the mount lions here in the second half as that ball is going to go out of play fake kukosko with the free kick yeah kirchner came in kind of at the last second there tried to get a little chip shot in wasn't able to get it on net. McGuire kind of cut down that angle. Good defensive play by him, but a lot closer than I thought it was going to be off the foot of Karstner, but a little wide. Yeah. 27 and change left to go in this game. Karstner, or I'm sorry, not Karstner, Kukoska sending the ball down the field for the Mount Lions, and Russell there to collect it. Yeah, Sebrin trying to settle things down, get his team to catch back up, set back up on that side of the field as Anderson collects it, but Mount Lions need to push play a little bit. They got their goal off of aggressive play, and I see that being the way that they get another one. Anderson across the field all the way over to Souter. Nice job keeping it in by Souter on the other end. No kidding, and now we have Sasich in his taken away and turnover grabbed away by Westminster. 
liking to go on that far sideline. Merrill trying to do it. What UCCS doing their best to take it back. Souter hit the deck there. No foul call. Nice little soccer incident, but a hard tumble for him. As it looks like Westminster will finally collect it. Moss will send it up to midfield. And trying to do something, a little bit of transition for use for Westminster, but it's thrown away by Zamora Reeves. Yeah, Caden Zamora Reeves, that's his, that's his game. Taking the transition, catching up with guys and taking the ball away. He's very good at doing that. He's got surgical feet when it comes to sticking him in there and, and taking the ball away. He's very good at that. Amano at midfield and Westminster slowing things down just a little bit. Trying to see what, what they can make happen here with 26 to play and break this 1-1 tied ball game. Flitton moving it further into the attacking half. And now over to Skylander. Skylander centers the ball, a header opportunity. Sussex and Moss were both there. It goes gonna go out of bounds, last touched by Moss. Yeah, both of them went up kind of 50-50 ball, ended up going off of Moss, so wise decision by Souter there on the other end. Just let that ball go out of bounds, let your defense regroup a little bit. A little bit of chaos coming down into the Mountain Lions defensive zone this half. They were very clean in the other half, or in the first half, I should say, uh, keeping the ball to the outside of the field or to the end line, as we were talking about earlier. But this time, they're, they're kind of letting stuff go a lot more than they were in the in the first half or in the early stages of this half as we start to reach the midpoint here of the half but they need to clean it up on defense a little bit they're letting they're letting the griffins get through here and amano and that and it looked like we were looking for uccs looking for the offsides call it no call was made oh no yeah no call was made ball ended up going out of bounds anyway nice save by kokosuke getting a foot on that one that looked like it was destined for the corner of the goal i thought it was it was going to be a 2-1 Griffins lead for sure, but Kokoska able to get a couple fingers on it, just push it to the outside. Nice recovery by him, but I agree with you wholeheartedly. We're right here on that on that angle, and it looked like it was offside, but uh, once again, it's when the ball is kicked, not by when it crosses that defensive line. So I guess they're saying that they had a good jump on it when the ball was kicked, so good play by him, but nice save by the Mountain Lions, Kokoska. It looks like we're seeing Westminster being a lot more comfortable taking these, not risks, but definitely taking these bigger shots than they did the first half. Yeah, I would say chances is the right word. They're they're not really risks. They're they're safe chances, but they're trying to look to create more chances for themselves, and that's definitely what they've done here in the last five to ten minutes. And UCCS Anderson with that shot is blocked and ricocheted, and it finally will go out. Last kicked out by Westminster, and now throw an opportunity for the Mountain Lions with 24, just under 24 to play. Well, I have to say it's really been turned into a beautiful day here at the soccer pitch. I mean, the skies opened up a beautiful view of the mountains. Not much you can complain about here at Mountain Lion Stadium today. No, a great fall w weekend here in Colorado Springs as that ball's thrown in and have now cleared out by Westminster. As just over 23 to play, Amano with the ball now for Westminster, bringing the ball down the field. And now over to near side to Flinton. Flinton handing off to Hasanovic. And back over, I believe that's Flinton, yes. Westminster doing a good job. I mean, it's what UCCS not nearly as good as just kind of keeping those clocking lanes. Up until then, it was, and that was more of a Westminster mistake versus UCCS really being able to capitalize. Yeah, they had a good little triangle passing pattern there that they had down, but uh, it looked like Amana lost his footing there and went right to Sebron Russell, but good cleanup there as they're coming back with it. And another good opportunity now, here's uh, Skylander just on the outside of the box, trying to send it in. Flinton is going to be a low outside of his reach and out of bounds, throwing for UCCS, as I believe that's going to be Katamov coming in for UCCS, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like Katamov's going to come in in place of Lucas Setrich. Katamov is, like we said, he's the disruptor of this Mountain Lion team. He just comes in in the middle of the game, fresh legs, feeling better than everybody's feeling on the field, and runs around and screws stuff up. So that's what he's going to look at doing here. He also 
Uh, you'll look to see him take any free kicks or corner kicks that you see coming for the Mount Lions way. As Mount Lions put that one into play and definitely struggling. Nice job there. Once again, caught him off. Messing stuff up in the middle of the field. And now another throwing opportunity just about yeah, 30 yards further down the field. Dulong gets the ball in, headed up by Kamatov. And it looks, looks like, like a foul. It's be a foul. Yep. Zamora yeah. Reeves had an easy shot there. I was wondering why he was pulling up, but yep, it's going to be a foul on the Mount Lions. Looks like it's going to go against Ranieri, if I had to guess, but they're going to try things again. Try two is acceptable for center ref as Westminster brings it to the midfield point. As Shoelander gets over to Amano, over to the middle of the field and out to the far side of the field for the Griffins. Chris passing on that sideline for Westminster. Now over to Flinton here in front of our broadcast position over to Hasanovic. An opportunity, but it's going to be kicked out of bounds and now quarter kick opportunity. Dr. McGuire kicks that out of bounds. Javon Flinton was all by himself cutting up the middle. I'm not really sure who lost him, but somebody lost track of him, and he came cutting right in. If he was able to get to that soccer ball, it would have been an easy goal for him in the middle of the field. Omano looks like he will take the corner. Also, we got Luis Martinez right there as well. Just past 20 minutes to play, Martinez gets the ball in from Amano. Amano with the ball once again as they get some clearing space. That ball is put into the box, is cleared out by UCCS and controlled by Westminster. Yeah, they, they worked it over to... It now, was... Now near side, Martinez getting it back in, headed out by McGuire. And two Griffins trying to control it. It's going to be a third one instead who ultimately gets it. But Westminster definitely with their opportunity here. To pick up that first shot, that first chance was Schlander in the middle, but Garrett DeLong able to get his foot out right in the right position for it and clear it back out for the Mountain Lions. But the Griffins have been really strong in regrouping in the offensive zone in the later part of this half, and that's exactly what they've done here. As Westminster brings it down, you got Flitton on this half of the field, getting it over to Shalander. Shalander taking it into the box, now back out to Flint. Flint has the opportunity, goes back out a few more yards to the center as Westminster will take a, a few more chances. That ball deflected. That deflected, yeah. But the shot by Brennan Neely puts the Griffins up two to one. Didn't quite see who it went off of. I think it may have been off of the UCCS defender and Kelton Hooker just trying to stick his leg out and see if he could get that ball to go back the other direction. Change direction on Kokoska wasn't really able to do anything. And Alex Anderson's red hot in the middle of the field. He's saying, we need to clean this up. This is our game to lose. We need to really clean it up because they came out, they were strong in the early part of this half and really kind of dictated the play up to that point. Easy uh, play there though, and a nice goal scored. So the Mountain Lions really just need to regroup, get back to their early, get the plays that they were making early in this game as DeLong moves it downfield, but it's on them. They've really dictated how much space they've been given the Griffins and the Griffins have gotten there some their success from just getting that extra breathing room from the Mountain Lions defense. So they cut that back off. I see them getting back into this game, but if they allow it to keep going, I think it'll slip away from them. 18 minutes left to go in this ball game. Westminster up two to one after that, that go ahead goal by Neely, his first goal of the season. So we're still seeing a very balanced Westminster offense, which I think is shown throughout this game. As we see now, Zamora Reeves with the ball, now sends it back up to the center for the Mount Lions. Mount Lions scoring off the penalty kick to take the 1-0 lead, and then Westminster scoring the next two to take this 2-0 lead here in Colorado Springs. Yeah, he's coming storming back, two unanswered after that that penalty kick goal for the Mount Lions, and really the Mount Lions 
don't look like they have a whole lot of answer for them right now, but they going to have to figure it out here pretty quick. They're running out of time on the clock. They are. You, I'm sorry. Westminster outscore, out shooting the Mount Lions 8-3 to three so far in the second half as they've taken the 2-1 two, two to one lead. And Westminster will clear that out, sends it deep down the field. It's going to go out of bounds, though, underneath the press box. And I wouldn't say that the game has been a tale of two halves, more of the second half has been a tale of two halves. The first half of the half, the Mount Lions were controlling play, really dictating where things have been going. But this this latter part of the half, the the Griffins have come storming right back, and the Mount Lions just aren't really sure what to do with them. No, and we kind of saw it in this. I mean, they had one as now Sussex on the far side for the Mount Lions, trying to get something going. But Westminster is just not making anything easy on that far sideline. And a foul, I believe, called against the Griffins. Unless it was out of bounds. Nope, a foul. Oh, no, sorry, a foul called against the Mount Lions. seen quite a bit more fouls in this half on both sides that we saw in the first half pretty smooth sailing that most of the way in the first half but definitely a little bit more choppy more physical more uh fouls being called on both sides in this half no i would definitely agree with you 16 to play here as griffins tried to bring it down the field and a good opportunity to disrupt that by dulong and it's gonna be a Westminster substitution. Starting to get down to crunch time a little bit for the Mount Lions, just over 15 to play, and they need at least one goal to send this overtime too to win it outright in regulation. So I believe we're seeing 12 uh, Justice Shulander as well as number 80, Adam Koblanski. We don't see eight that though, those kind of numbers on most soccer uniforms, but should make it easy for us to identify as Westminster getting ready to throw the ball in on the far sideline. And once again, out of bounds. Once again, Westminster will throw it in. And Sussex trying to do something with it, but once again goes out of bounds. Advances about 20 to 30 yards along that far sideline for Westminster. And we're gonna stop the play. Looks like some sort of warning is gonna be given here. Not really sure to who. No cards given, but somebody got an explanation or talking to about something, but we'll, we'll play on the mountain lions, get the ball back and they just need to push play. Like we said, the, the Griffins, credit to them, they've just been coming right at the Mountain Lions, and the Mountain Lions have the, had their hands hold for sure. So try and get some of that, that momentum back on offense and should play out well for you the rest of the way for the Mountain Lions. But other than that. And that ball ricochets off of the attempt against the center and his last touch by UCCS. So Ian Rose, we haven't we talked a lot about him a ton in the first half. I feel like he's just been hanging out down there this yeah, half. Hasn't seen a whole lot of him in the last ten or fifteen minutes or so. But yeah, it looked like the mountain lions were gearing up for a corner kick there. They say ricocheted off of a of a mountain lion body on its way out. So once again, push and play on the other side and the Mountain Lions are just giving the Griffins all of this extra space. And Martinez getting it over to to Skyler Skylander and then that is a corner kick opportunity now for Westminster. Yeah, kind of a reaction play there by Sebrin Russell kicking that one back out, shaking his hand on himself right after, but not a whole lot of success in corner kicks in any of the games we've seen today, but Certainly more of the setup plays coming from the Griffins. So you have Martinez going to send the ball in. One Griffin standing literally right in front of Kokoska, but that's headed out by, I believe that was McGuire, back over to Martinez. Martinez trying to send it back in. Kokoska grabs it and ends any possibility. I think it was uh, Souter that actually got his head on it. McGuire was, yeah, you definitely are right. He was cutting in, but... I think he missed it, Souter, with the clear on the header, but 
good clear by the mountain lions as they try and speed things up in the neutral part of the field. Westminster regaining possession, being, as we said, very intentional about what they do in the midfield area. Martinez now on the near sideline in front of where we, where we are standing. Martinez comfortable taking all the way in. Passing back and forth between him and Mano. A shot going in that looks like that was Landon Ward and saved by Kukoska. Credit to Kukoska. He's really been tested time and time again here in the second half. And in a ways, his defensive almost left him out to dry at times. And he stood tall to the task. Really, if if he hasn't been playing as well as he has, I see this being more of a 3-1 or 4-1 game. So credit to Kokoska. But the Mountain Lion defense has really just been broken down the last 20 minutes of this game. And they're going to have to go somewhere and find something to bring their team back in this game. But the possession has been really dictated all by the Griffins for the it, last 20 minutes. It feels like Westminster, whatever they found, has finally worked. Yes. As, as Amano now at the bottom midfield, Amano a dangerous player. A shot blocked by Sussex and cleared out by, it looks like McGuire. No, by, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Souter. Yes, well, and as you said, it's not that the Griffins haven't been playing well this whole game. They've been playing perfectly fine, but just the, the mountain line defense has stomped out anything that they have pushed their way until the last 15, 20 minutes of this game and everything started to go through. So the mountain line defense just needs to regroup, figure out where their weak spot is and, and patch those holes up and they're right back into this game, give their, their offense some chance to do something in the offensive zone. Two Griffins in the box as the ball is thrown in, and it's trying to be caught by Kukoska. He finally gets a good hold on it and rolls it out for the Mount Lions over to Ranieri. Ranieri trying to get up to over to Samora Reeves. A little bit of transition opportunity here for the Mount Lions to tie things up. And a little bit long, but it will be tracked down by Kadamov. Sends it in. No one particularly there. I mean, you kind of had... Russell was coming in, but he was a little bit too far behind the play on the on the east side of the field coming in. But, I mean, this is the type of things that the Mountain Lions need to do. Get the ball in the middle of the field, see what happens, try and get bodies towards the net, and then that's when good things start to happen for you. And they haven't done a whole lot of that this, this half. They, they were better at it in the first half, but... Really, the transition opportunities has been what they've been trying to capitalize off of, and the Griffins have just not given them any of those in the latter part of this half. Just past 10 minutes to play here in regulation here at Mount Lion Stadium. UCCS trying to tie the score up. Westminster trying to hold on to a one-goal lead. As on the far sideline, that ball is going to be passed over to McGuire, and now back over to the near side to Dulong. Samora Reeves now with the ball for the Mount Lions, and they're going to send all the way back into the backfield for McGuire. Yeah, nice regroup here for the Mount Lions. There wasn't really a whole lot developing there. It's smart play to kind of slow things down, get your uh, players in the spots that they need to be. Nice play there by Reeves to get that ball through. But but smart play, methodical from the, from the Mount Lions, and that's exactly what you need to get back into this game and get some momentum your way. No, definitely putting that ball in, didn't have a whole lot of opportunity, but at least making Westminster at least work for it as Mount Lions on our far sideline, kicking back and forth, just under nine to play down a goal. Amano there to break it up for Westminster and passing it up to field. Martinez, now with the ball making the turn. Pull it. Slick footwork there by Martinez, leaving the defender behind. I thought he, if he wanted to, he might have been able to make something with it, but decided to pull back, and I think they're perfectly content, and it looks like that, that ball. ball came out, yeah. Yeah. And so now... Trying to push play here. Russell throwing the ball into Zamora Reeves, 8.20 to play. One, uh... uh Strong point for this Mount Lion team that we haven't really seen is both Kokoska and Liam McGuire. Been with the team for a while. McGuire being that last person back in the defense and Kokoska being the goalkeeper. If you're not pushing your team further down the field, you can't regroup back to those and kind of let them quarterback the play. Use their knowledge of playing with the team to kind of get something going for you. We've seen that in the last couple 
uh, regrouped here from the Mountain Lions, but it's the first time we've seen it since the first couple minutes of this half. And once you get those guys to kind of organize your guys down the field, get the ball into the offensive zone, and get those plays set up, you're not going to have a whole lot of success, and that's why the Mountain Lions have scuffled here in the last several minutes. Westminster bringing two players on just before that five-minute mark. Combination of fresh legs and eat a little time up while you're in the process. And Westminster, they're going the wrong direction. UCCS trying to do something. Anderson throws it down, and it'll be a throwing opportunity, I believe, basically down at the corner. Yeah, I think that was Luke Sussex down there was really trying to get something moving. Such it is going to come back in in place of Katamov, but looks like we're going to get a throw in here, and they just need to keep pressing the play and keep that ball in the offensive zone. So foul's going to be called here for the Mountain Lions. Looks like McGuire might pick that one up. 6.40 left to play, and it's going to be Ian Rose kicking the ball in for Westminster. And you're going to start to see Westminster take their time on this one. They've got the lead. They, they're in no rush to go anywhere. Kind of, if there's no play to be made downfield, just pass it back around, regroup, try it again. Uh, but the Mount Lions are going to really have to start pressing the play here because if they just let the, the Griffins pass it around, they're going to run out of time. So they're going to have to be the aggressors and start to push the play on their own terms. Good opportunity to take that away from the Mount Lions. With just under six minutes left to play here. Now onto this near side to Russell, back over to Zamora Reeves, trying to get across the midfield point at least. McGuire over to the far side now to Sussex. McGuire with a little rushed pass there. Uh, Sussex had to kind of change course. So the Mountain Lions just need to, while they need to press the play, they, do, they can't rush. There's a difference between pressing play and rushing because if they rush, their, their passes are going to be sloppy. It's not going to be what they need. They're going to pick up unneeded fouls. But if, you're, if you think about what you're doing and you push the play in a smart way, that's where you're going to have success here in the last five minutes. And that's what we saw from the women's team earlier today. So exactly what they did earlier is what the Mountain Lions need to do again. So see if they can channel some of that prior energy that we saw from the women's game for the Mountain Lions to get back into this game. Ranieri with the free kick opportunity. Just five minutes left to play. So any Westminster sub, the clock will stop. Clock is stopped. So now I want to, and it looks like it's because the Westminster player was taking his time getting back 10 yards is my guess. Yeah, the, if the player is not getting off the field in a, in a timely manner, uh, they see that as clock wasting, and they will stop the clock. In we're near is sending the ball in. I don't know if anyone touched it, but it goes off wide. Last deflect, last touch by Westminster, though. So a corner, corner kick opportunity. Kick, yep. It went off. Uh, looked like it was uh, Eustace Slander over there getting that his head on that one. Tried to tried to head it ahead for the Griffins, but wasn't able to, to direct it forward. It looks like it might be Anderson taking it. Ball is in and play is stopped. They're going to give a foul here, call it on the Mount Lions. So 4.15 to play. Westminster up 2-1. to one. Free kick is coming for... Rose, he's telling everybody get downfield. Just past four minutes to play now here at Mount Lion Stadium. As ball is sent downfield, off to the west sideline, stays in play for Westminster for finally rolling out of bounds. UCCS throw one of 342. Yeah, I think it was. Uh... Looked like it was Sussex over there. Thought that one was going out of bounds. Kind of gave up on the play momentarily, but once again, slander coming in to make the play. And now a potential opportunity, but it looks like it's going to be Ward who decides to pull back a little bit while McGuire tries to steal it away. Good job by Ward to try to kind of keep away. And now corner kick opportunity for Westminster with 3.15 to play. This is exactly what we're going to see the rest of the way from the Griffins, kind of get it down into that corner. 
hold it there, pass it around a little bit. If the mountain lions do come in and try and challenge it, try and angle yourself so that the, if they can clear it, it's going to be your own corner kick. Um, but the mountain lions are running out of time here, and they're just going to waste time if you're the Griffins. And that corner is Carlos Vasquez. And a goal kick now, 2.48 to play here in the game. You can see the Mountain Lions are really moving at a much higher pace now than the Griffins are. Sending it down the field is Kukoska. Headed down by Westminster and looks like ultimate control by the Griffins. Not what the Mountain Lions had in mind there for that one out of bounds. So it will be a throwing opportunity for UCCS Sussex to do it in quickly with 2.25 left to go. They're going to keep passing it back to Kokoska and try and get those deep balls. That way, if it does go out of bounds, that they at least have it in the offensive side. But it's just going to be a clearing fest from here on out. And now an opportunity for Merrill. One on two, two on two now with some help. And that ball is going to go off the post, off the bar, and rebound. That is going to be ultimately controlled by Russell. Two minutes left to go in this game as Russell brings it down the field in transition. Zamar Reeves with the ball. Has it stolen away by the Griffins. No call being made by the official. And that is a call. I would agree on that one. Zamora Rees uh, pushing Zach Moss down. Not a good place to do it. Essentially 18 yards out and about five or six yards from the east sideline. 137 left to play in this ball game. Yeah, and Reeves is going to argue his case, but not a whole lot there. But credit to Kokoska. He knows exactly where that crossbar is. That's the <laughs> second one that we've seen go squarely off, and he didn't even react. He's like, that's going to hit the crossbar. I don't even need to try. So credit to him. He knows exactly where his angles are going. It's going to be another corner kick here for the Griffins. But that's a, that's a sign of a good goal to, uh, goalkeeper back there, knowing exactly where your post and your crossbar is. Martinez will do will throw the will kick the ball in. One minute to play here in regulation. And out of bounds in favor. You throw in for UCCS. Zamora is throwing it down quickly. Ranieri is gonna have to turn and go quick. Griffin's able to retain possession. 45 seconds left to play. Zamora Reeves with the ball in the backfield. Good play, Zamar Reeves able to maintain possession of it, sends it down, Anderson is down there, Anderson has a chance, but Ian Rose is gonna be there instead. Ooh, nice shield there on the play by Vance, but turning on the Jets there, they're gonna, this is pretty much gonna be the game here for the Mountain Lions. I don't think they're gonna be able to set anything up here in the next final 20 seconds, but. Unless they could get something quickly, 15 seconds and a free kick opportunity, but Mount Lions, Kokoska coming up to take it. Eight seconds left to go, Kokoska sends it down deep. Multiple Mount Lions in the box, headed out by Westminster, and that's probably gonna do it as it's headed out of bounds. Westminster taking the two to one victory against UCCS. Yeah, tough loss for the Mount Lions. It's the first time that they are handed a loss on their home field here at Mountain Lion Stadium, but credit to them, their their defense was playing very well for the first part of this game and then just kind of fizzled out there towards the end and not a whole lot you can do about that. They, they just, the momentum switch was the hard the way of the Griffins and there's not a whole lot that you can do about that. A great goalkeeping performance by Ian Rose. He had multiple opportunities in the first half. Mount Lions were just pounding it in the first half. Rose did a great job. Mount Lions finally get that penalty kick, but then it's Merrill and Neely with the with the tying and then go-ahead goals for Westminster. Westminster back-to-back -back wins now after the win against Fort Lewis. They will head to Pueblo. They will be facing CSU Pueblo on Sunday. UCCS will be back here. You have to call for both games on Sunday as Mount Lions take on Colorado Mesa. That's right. We'll be back here on Sunday and for this UCCS men's team, this is back-to-back -back losses now for them. They're really looking for that rebound here at home. That was their strength, but since that didn't come their way, Sunday against uh, Metro is going to be, uh, that's that's going to be their real test. So. so thank you all for joining us today. Final score here, Westminster 2, UCCS 1 in the conference opener for both teams. I'm Jared Verner. This is Jake Ross for our entire team here at Mount Lion Stadium. Thank you so much for watching. Jake will be back here on Sunday. Thank you so much.